everyone. In today's notable news in food science, we'll be talking about added sugar. And I'm bringing this up because our friends at CBC Marketplace, uh, it's a great television show and I highly encourage our friends in food science land to watch it because it does have a really decent approach to um, science communication with respect to food science and nutrition. However, uh, this past week, they did speak about the labeling standards for sugar within consumer packaged goods in Canada. And we have spent many weeks um, in this course talking about how do we do labeling and some of the politics of how we do labeling in, uh, will give implication to how we label the, these products. So let's just jump out to where we're at here. We, we've talked about the upgraded standards for labeling in Canada and we spent some time talking about how sugars are um, in Canada expressed within the ingredient declaration as a grouping. So if you've got mono or disaccharide sugars, so think mono, uh, monosaccharides like glucose or fructose, disaccharides like uh, sucrose, um, maltose would be another one, lactose. In many cases, they are other ingredients that are dominant sugars. So uh, dehydrated cane syrup or rice syrup or corn syrup. And in some cases, they are fruit and vegetable concentrates that would be um, used as a sweetening agent, not as a characterizing agent. So for example, apple juice from concentrate has been developed in a way that it is what's called decharacterized apple juice. On the label, it reads apple juice. However, they're removing a lot of the acid and a lot of the flavor profile so that you end up with just a sweet syrup and it's been used as a, as a sweetening agent. But up until this new sugars grouping requirement on the label, it would have been declared as apple juice. So under the new declarations, these sweeteners are grouped under sugars and that is declared. And that, that declaration on the sugars moves forward or backwards depending on the percent weight. And uh, using the different software and the different database approaches from a formulation documentation, that sugars grouping can move quite high if you have a considerable amount of sugar. Um, on the new Nutrition Facts label as well, we're expressing sugar as a percent daily value, which is new. Before, we would just have it as a gram weight. And we do have this aspect of um, interpretation on the percent daily value, which is new as well. So if we're taking a look at this hypothetical label, 22% of the daily sugar intake, that's a lot based off of the label interpretation. Now, Marketplace brought up the issue because in the United States, it just happens that products have to have an added sugars line on their nutrition facts table. And in many respects, this makes a lot of sense from a consumer perspective, but from a manufacturing perspective, it can be very challenging to be able to do this adaptation in that in many cases, the addition of sugars is not just from a strict straight up formulation perspective, it is from a quality assurance um, and quality control perspective that we're getting the functionality in that food product and the amount of sugar that's added in certain products is arbitrary based off of the quality of the incoming ingredients. And so Marketplace talked about Campbell's soup and the fact that they're adding sugar to the tomato soup. Well, that's from a food science and a food functionality perspective, that would be normal. On any given harvest of tomatoes, you are going to have different Brix values. And I and I uh, put a picture of a Brix refractometer here because it's it's a very simple and straightforward device. I actually own one and keep it in my kitchen for tracking things like jams and jellies and uh, fruit preserves. Because every batch of fruit, every batch of vegetables um, comes in at a different Brix value. And most of that Brix in fruits and vegetables happens to be soluble sugar. So from a quality control perspective, let's say you had this tomato soup and you were expecting the tomatoes to come in at 10 bricks and you got tomatoes coming in at eight bricks, you would be adjusting it with sugar to get it up to 10 bricks. And that is a quality assurance function. We're labeling that sugar, but the amount that we're adding on any given uh, formulation is going to vary. 
And as such, having a declaration on added sugars, especially on products such as the Campbell's soup, where the variability and potential variability could be real or realistically quite high, um, it's unfair for this company to have to rerun a print label on that product and adjust the print label every single time. Um, and so from, from, uh, from that perspective, we're expressing the total amount of sugar within that product on a consistent basis. And we know that the compliance is going to be good, but the quantity of added sugar, because of its variability in the product, makes it a more complex thing to be listing. Now, Marketplace also used the example of the vitamin water, and there the, the sugar is added on a consistent basis and is the only qualifying ingredient for uh, contributing that sweetness. In the case of the yogurt that they're uh, describing on the, on the uh, television show, they are talking about sugar that's both naturally occurring and included in the formulation. And in the case of the sugar that's, uh, that's naturally occurring, again, there's, there can be variability. In the case of milk, uh, we do have much stricter standards in terms of um, the soluble solids and the lactose content in the milk because of our milk marketing boards. And the milk gets triaged off to different, uh, different applications depending on those soluble solids. Um, but in the case of that added sugar, the total sugar is expressed. And from my perspective, I think consumers should be looking at total sugar and not just worrying about added sugar because sugar is sugar and the molecules are treated the same way by our bodies. And so we want to be cognizant that we want to eat less total sugar overall in our products. So just that friendly reminder as you are going about your grocery shopping and going about developing new food products for the grocery retail space, do think about these sorts of political scenarios that may be occurring in how they change uh, consumers' behaviors. We uh, were just talking about the availability heuristic and that when something is uh, loud in the news, we tend to modify our behaviors because of that. I do really like what uh, CBC Marketplace has been doing in terms of amplifying different uh, news stories related to uh, food and nutrition over the years. And I do like the fact that they, uh, in general, have very good science communication. In this case, I think they miss the mark slightly because sugar is sugar and um, the added sugar scenario doesn't uh, doesn't completely embrace the complexity of how the entire um, the entire uh, manufacturing sector has to deal with the scenario. Those labeling rules are there to protect consumers, but they're also there to provide a fair framework for food manufacturers. And so in this case, I think the framework is fair to declare total sugars, to declare sugars within groupings in the ingredient declaration and and to not put added sugars alone on the nutrition facts table knowing that within certain classes of products that added sugars is going to fluctuate on a on a lot by lot basis all right ask more good questions i'll be tracking more news stories for you and we'll talk to you again real soon